Hello and welcome to another C Sharp tutorial where today I am going to show you how to do type conversions for your custom data type. If you haven't already watched it, you might want to watch the objects tutorial I did last week where it explains how to make a custom class and a custom struct and the difference between the two. Uh, today we're going to be working with a struct but everything I demonstrate should also work with a class as well. So we want to create a new project and do a console application. And I, let's call this number uh, because this project I will be using for two or three different tutorials that are along the same lines. So I don't want to limit the project name to just this tutorial. And you'll see why I'm calling it number in a moment. And I'm going to be using .NET 5.0 and create. OK, so as I demonstrated in the objects tutorial, we, would, we will want to add new item. And it will be a class, and I'm going to call it number. And actually, now that I think about it, these two will conflict. So we want to change the namespace to custom number, just so that it has a different name than this object that we're doing. And this will also be a struct. And so let's just give it a parameter and a constructor so that we can actually work with it. So let's do private uh, double, let's call it value. And then a public double value and get underscore value and set underscore value equals value. Now notice that this value is blue. That's because this is a setter. So when someone says uh, our number dot value equals something, then it will, that's what this value will equal, and it will set the underscore value to equal that. I could have probably chosen a better name, so it'd be less confusing, but value is descriptive on what it is. It's the value that we're storing in the struct. And so let's create a constructor, public number, and have it take in a double, uh, let's just call it D and then do value or underscore value equals uh, D. So when someone does our number or number N equals new number and then some value, the value field for this will equal whatever is inputted. So if we go back to here, we can do number A equals new number three. And then A dot value. And we run it. And it should print out three. There we go. Just like how I demonstrated in the objects tutorial. Now for the new stuff. So this tutorial is for value conversions. So so conversions. The first way you can do type conversions is by having a bunch of methods or functions. So public, let's do converting to a number first. 
So public uh, static number uh, convert to number. And we're going to put in it int i. And let's use a lambda expression because it will only be one line. And let's say new number i. So this will plug the value of i into our constructor and return it. And since our constructor takes in a double, it's using implicit conversion to convert the integer into a double. Implicit conversion means that you don't tell the program to convert. It just knows based on the type that it can convert automatically and that the values are compatible. Also, if you don't know, this is a lambda expression. And it is replacing the it is replacing the body of the method. So we can copy this, paste it two more times, because I'm going to have two more examples of this, and do float f, and then input f. f a float is like a double, except it takes up less space, but it's also less accurate. Most of the time, floats work fine when wanting to store a uh, decimal value, but doubles are way more accurate. So if you really want the precision, you can use a double. I just decided to use a double up here because why not? And so same thing, a float can be implicitly converted to a double. Here, we're going to do double D and just do D. That does not need implicitly converted because we're inputting a double and the parameter takes a double. We can also use the function, um, we can also use a function to uh, convert from a number. So public static convert int convert to int. and number n. And actually, we can uh, simplify that too. And so, my, I just touched my screen, so my virtual keyboard showed up. This would be int n dot value. And so this would be an explicit conversion. A You cannot output a double as an int because there is more to a double than an int. It has decimal places. It's stored differently. There's just, you can't just switch a double to an int. But you can explicitly convert it, which is then saying that there is a function within int that allows you to cast it to cast a double to an int. In this case, it's just um, truncating. So anything past that decimal place, it cuts it off. Same thing if you go from a uh, float to an int. So then this will be from convert to int, it will be convert to float. And then convert to double. So convert to double. No casting necessary. Value is already a double. Except let's change the output type to a double here and the output type to a float here. And then here, we just cast it to a float. So that's how you use functions to convert. We can also use define our own implicit and explicit uh, conversions. 
So we would want to do public static implicit operator and then let's do int first because that's the order we were doing it before and do number n and then this we can just say convert to int And that's simple because we already have the function written. So it would be pointless to essentially just rewrite the same thing that we have up here. And then float and convert to float and double and convert to double. So, if we go back to program.cs, I can do int i equals a. And so, let's make that 3.141592653. Which, if you don't know, that's pi. So if we then have it write i, it should just print out 3. There you go. So it, then we can, let's do a string here and do a dot value. So it has 3.141592653535 stored as the value for a, but then we implicitly converted it to an integer, and it converts it to 3. So then there's also the opposite direction, converting other types to a number, which would be uh explicit so public static explicit operator number and in here the parameter will be int i and we will just do convert to number i. Oops. I pasted what I meant to copy. And so these will be the same, except it will be float f and f and then double d and d. And so those are very simple. And then now in program.cs, we can do number a equals instead of, notice it's not implicitly converting because we don't have a way to implicitly convert to a number unless we changed integer. But here is a cast, and it's explicitly converting now. And if we run this again, it should still say 3.141592653535. So that was it. That was converting between types. The same thing can be done with, you can convert between any types, implicitly or explicitly, depending on what is defined in that type. So if I look at the code for int, somewhere here, nope, I don't see it. 
somewhere implicit and explicit conversions are defined for the built-in types. But this is how you do it for your own types. And you can do much more complex stuff. Like if I wanted to, I could put a body on this and like do if double is greater than one then can convert to number else return zero not double d and so then it would only it would return zero for anything one or lower but i don't want it that i want it to just output the double value. But if you are working on something more complex, you can have more complex conversion functions. So that was it. The links are down in the description. Hope you liked it. Uh, hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Comments, questions, comments, concerns in the comments section. Links are in the description down below. Till next time. Bye.